In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. That is the good news. And it's good news that is just as applicable today in the 21st century as it was when those words were spoken to the person who heard them in today's gospel, Zacchaeus. For us to understand how great the salvation of Zacchaeus is, we have to realize how great his fall had been, how lost he was in his spiritual life. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. He worked for the Romans. His job was to take from them the people of Israel, the share of taxes that the government levied, and to add on to that amount enough for him to have a good living. He was taking this money from a people who were proud of the fact that they were sons of Abraham, a people who bragged, if you will, in the scripture that they were in obedience to no one but God alone, that they were free, they were the chosen people, and yet they found themselves enslaved to an empire that was choking them by persecuting their customs and by exacting tax upon tax because they were not pagan Romans. What makes this even more complicated is that while Zacchaeus was good at what he did, he was Jewish himself. And so his own people hated him for doing to them what he did. And the more they pushed away from him, the further he went from not only his people and his nation, but from his tradition and his faith. And so he finds himself on the very periphery of the chosen people. He had traded his faith, the synagogue, his status for wealth, for prestige among the Romans, and for success in the world. And then one day something happened. He heard that Jesus was coming And inside, he seems to have realized that he had, in fact, a spiritual poverty that no amount of money, no amount of success could buy back. For this reason, he joined the crowd that was following our Lord He ran ahead to try to see him and realizing that he was short, he climbed that sycamore tree. What motivated him to do that? St. John Maximovich, the great saint of Shanghai and San Francisco, the great saint of America, says that there was in him an extraordinary pain that comes when a person abandons their faith or their tradition in action but not in heart. His heart longed for what he had given up. St. John puts it this way, there was still in him a burning, flaming, consuming, self-sacrificing love for the expectation of the nations 
for the one whom the prophets had said would come. Humbly. The one who would carry our griefs and bear our sorrows. And so he climbs that tree and he gets to see Jesus eye to eye, face to face. The sinner sees the Savior. And in those eyes, he sees the compassion and the love and the forgiveness that is Christ. And that's why he comes down from that tree and joyfully receives Christ, not just there, but in his very house. What did Zacchaeus see? He saw salvation. Salvation is not a philosophy, it's not a theology, it's not an approach to life, it's a person. It's the one who came down from heaven, light of light, true God of true God, the only begotten, who is also man, who came to die for our salvation, who came to give his life as a ransom to death to give us eternal life. The one who would make the sacrifice that would prove greater love than this has no one that he laid down his life for his friends and you are my friends. Those are his words. He sees salvation as a person. And it is person. The salvation that is offered to us is personal. In the Gospel of John it says, and he gave to those who believed in him, believed in his name, the power to become children of God. Children that he knows by name. How many times does our Lord call people by name? Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. Martha, Martha, you're troubled about many things. Peter, on this rock I will build my church. Why are you persecuting me? Mary, go and tell my disciples I am risen from the dead. He calls us by name. That's why in church every sacrament you receive, you receive it by name, the servant of God, the handmaid of God in your name. Because God knows you personally. And he saves you personally. Because he loves you personally. And so Zacchaeus experiences personal salvation. Jesus comes to his house. St. Nikolai of Zicha, the great saint of Serbia, who came to be the rector of St. Tikhon Seminary, where I, where I have that position now, and who reposed there. We're building a shrine to the place where he fell asleep in the Lord. He said that Christ is the salvation that comes to the house and Zacchaeus is the house. He comes to us in the same way. When Christ is far away from us, our house in weakness becomes a place of sin. But when we let him into our homes and into our lives, he drives out that sin, he forgives that sin and brings us salvation. My friends, we are entering a season of house cleaning. 
women will make their spring cleaning from top to bottom of their houses. And we will make the spring cleaning of our in confession in Lent. We will let Christ bring us that salvation as he takes away our sins. Today begins a shift in the liturgical orientation of our church. We move from answering the question of who Jesus is. We saw in the Nativity and Christmas that he is the Son of God. And in Theophany, one of the Holy Trinity. We move from that gospel of the incarnation of who Jesus is to a gospel of deliverance of why he came. He came to suffer the cross, to be buried in the tomb, and to rise on the third day for our salvation. We move from the gospel of incarnation to the gospel of deliverance. And already in the background, we see the procession coming. Not a procession of shepherds and wise men, not a procession of St. John the Baptist and his disciples, but crowds of people, some of them shouting Hosanna, but many of them shouting crucify him, crucify him. And in that procession we see the Lord giving blessings upon us and having his blood spilt upon him for our salvation. We're approaching the season of Lent. And we begin like Zacchaeus with a desire at the very end of that journey to behold, to experience, to encounter the risen Christ, the one who dies for us. We realize the need we have for the Savior. And we realize that he is the only one who can satisfy that need. We begin the journey with that realization. Next week, we'll we'll see how we see ourselves in truth, like the publican or the Pharisee. But in this journey today, we begin desiring, like Zacchaeus, to see the Savior. What happened to Zacchaeus? The Gospel of Luke tells us that he was restored to his faith, to his tradition, to his people. He said, Lord, I give half of my possessions to the poor. He was no longer concerned with material wealth, but spiritual growth. And if I've cheated anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. That's the formula in Deuteronomy for making up, for cheating. The Lord, in fact, restored him to the tradition of his faith. He brought him back to being one of the people for whom he came. St. Clement of Rome tells us that Zacchaeus went on to Rome to work with St. Peter. It's funny, he went to that city where the government had distorted him, almost destroyed his faith, worked him for dishonesty. And what did he bring to that city, the great capital of Rome? Not revenge, but salvation. 
the message of salvation. When Nero began the great persecution of Christians in Rome, Zacchaeus died a martyr's death, but not without bringing to countless people in the city and its surrounding areas the message that he had heard, the message that we hear today, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save those who are lost, the good news of the gospel. That good news is calling us today to join Zacchaeus on the journey we're preparing for on these five Sundays before Lent starts, and then the long journey of Great Lent that will take us to Holy Pascha, where, God willing, we will not just meet in theory, not just in partying, but in true spiritual experience. The God who loves us more than we love ourselves. The God who came as salvation for Zacchaeus and for us. To him be all glory. With his Father and the Holy Spirit unto ages of ages. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is never shall be. Let us so.